terrorists attacked Professor Suborno Isaac on April 28, 2019, while promoting the love in Jackson Heights. Jackson Heights, or the Bengali part of America, to glue a poster, one man saw my middle name, and he immediately started talking rude things behind our back. Because of he Isaac? Said, yeah, he okay. said I and my family cannot be Muslim because the middle name Isaac gives us Jewish and Christian spells. What would you think about that? Very rude. And that man directly smoking his cigarette at us. The Islamic terrorists also unleashed an act of terror in Bangladesh on July 1st, 2016 when Bengali Muslims were getting ready to celebrate Eid at the end of Ramadan. The scope of this terrorist assault was uh, unimaginable, because such atrocities usually never take place in Bangladesh. That day, terrorists entered the Holy Odyssey, a bakery famous for its bagels and coffee, and at 8 p.m. opened fire indiscriminately, killing two police officers, Salahuddin and Rabiul Islam, who tried to stop them. They immediately took full control of the restaurant by taking hostages, most of whom were foreigners. Throughout the night, some terrorists played a negotiating game with law enforcement, while others were busy killing hostages, sending photos of the victims to the IS. The terrorists vowed that this was only the beginning of the storm that was intended to punish Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who wanted to separate religious from the state by removing from the Bangladesh constitution Islam status as the state religion. Let's think that we should become secular and deinstitutionalize our religion is one of the main things that allows us to kill other people, uh, think of each other as in a hierarchy. So I think that was a slightly good accent and an extremely explosive response by the terrorists. Once they realized that the terrorists were negotiating merely to stall for time so that they could kill all the hostages, commando team from the Bangladeshi army stormed the restaurant. Ending the 11-hour standoff with the seven terrorists, who had killed 22 hostages, including two adolescents, Tarisi, a 19-year-old girl, and Faraz, a 20-year-old boy. The tears of the victim's parents during the wave of anger from not only all corners of being the death, but also each and every big city worldwide, including New York. On July 1st, I went to NYU with my dad to prepare for my interview with Dr. Lisa Koiko, with the president of City College of New York. But in the basement was a small cafeteria behind the student lounges, in which a large LCD TV monitor hung on the wall. This is where we had watched the Peshawar School massacre, where terrorists killed 170 students, including five-year-old Kola. Now, merely a few months later, it seemed that I was about to witness another terrorist attack. At 4 p.m., as we were passing by the television on our way to buy a Diet Coke, I glanced towards the TV in CNN and then turned away quickly. CCNY President Dr. Lisa Cuico interviewed me. Just showed me how he created the circuit and the battery and using zinc and copper. I think you're going to be the next Sir Isaac Newton. I'm going to be the next Sir Isaac Newton. It was a pretty fun time there, not going to lie. Faster than words can have convey, again, I thought, believe I just saw terrorists killing innocent people in Bangladesh, the country where my own father was born some 40 years ago. My dad had published some 25 books long before he turned 25 years old. The plots of all these books had been designed to create a secular Bangladesh. However, after writing the poem Vande Mataram, Bangladesh, he had decided to leave Bangladesh because he felt that he had been about to face the same fate the bloggers who had been killed by Islamic terrorists. Came back to reality when Dad asked me, why aren't we solving math problems, Isaac? Instead of answering his question, I dragged myself to the nearest sofa and faced the TV screen once more. There, I saw more blood. The blood of children. The seven terrorists had killed almost all the hostages, including Faraz and Tarisi. Faraz, student of Emory University in the U.S., gone to Dhaka on his summer vacation, was visiting the cafe with his Indian friend Tarisi. 
student of the University of California in Berkeley. The terrorist started asking Teresi a series of questions when she failed to recite a verse from the Quran. They then decided to kill her when they learned she was a Hindu. They also killed Faraz for trying to save a Hindu. Decided to take to social media using the hashtag slash uh, soap pray for Bangladesh to unite all Bengalis in a bid to accelerate our anti-Islamic state campaign. That night, instead of solving math problems, I wrote a speech, which I asked Dad to deliver at NYU. You did the right thing, Isaac. You condemn those terrorists who killed many innocent people, including for us and to Rishi. Next day, my dad delivered the speech, but was unable to finish it because of an emotional outburst. Allah Akbar used to mean God is great. Today it means I'm about to go to Holy Tishan restaurant to kill all foreigners. For the next two days, visited many campuses where I stood holding a banner that read, Terrorists have unleashed their terror again. This time, they decided to kill our guests and our angels. Now the question is off. Why did seven terrorists kill their fellow human beings in the most barbaric way possible? The answer is simple. Hate. Hate drove them to chant Allahu Akbar while shooting Malala. Hate motivated them to shout Allahu Akbar while killing 130 children at Peshawar. Hate led two brothers to recite Allahu Akbar before killing journalists at Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Hate allowed them to kill 137 people in the Paris attack, and hate motivated Omar Martin to kill 50 people at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. How can we remove this hate from the minds of people who commit such inhumane acts? Some of whom become terrorists like those who kill 22 innocent people at the Holy Artisan. True revenge is achieved through education and good moral values only. And to do this, parents should stop giving their children Taliban training and instead start training them to become scientists like Sir Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. In addition, they should teach them good moral values so that they may become model citizens for the upcoming Muslim generation. The power of education and moral values is not the best way to take revenge. It's the only way. By doing so, we can make Islam great again. It's time to abandon the illusion and adapt to the reality of Islam. I love my country so much that every day I wake up and play the national anthem of my country. And I want you to do the same. to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.